the Group Technical Training Academy, the complete solution for your training needs. Technicians can learn from leading instructors on trends, issues, and technology. The Group's comprehensive training program will provide information that will sharpen your skills. Hello, I'm Mark DeCoster, and today I'm talking to you about O2 sensors, wide versus narrow band, using O2 sensors to help analyze drivability concerns. Now, if you look at that blue line in there, that's actually a bank one. A bank two is the red line. What the red line is showing, this happens to be a, a 2008 Ford Ranger, and it's got a misfire. And what I'm actually seeing in that red uh, line there, those switches, I'm actually seeing each that cylinder that's misfiring, uh, each individual misfire in that switch. Now you rarely see that on a scan tool. Another O2 sensor tech tip. This is a narrow band sensor I've got right here. And you can maybe see that there's little flutes on this thing. This particular sensor is designed for a particular vehicle or a particular number of vehicles. There are other sensors that the flutes are in a different position. They're in a different shape. Or as you look at this image that I have on the screen right now, you can see that I've got one that's got flutes. It looks very similar to the one I just held up. And then there's one right next to it that has different openings. Now there's different openings this is probably a universal sensor. And you read at the top that even though all of these sensors work the same, they're really not interchangeable. Now the exception to that is, of course, if you've got a TSB or the manufacturer has provided and said, well, that's the one that is in it. This is the one you're going to put back in. Okay, that's fine. Then I'll, I'll put something that looks different. Well, otherwise, I want something that looks the same, unless I've got documentation somewhere that this is an improved model and will work. And the reason for that is, is that those flutes that they put in there, the holes that they put in there, are designed to catch the exhaust as it goes by, depending on the direction of the exhaust and where it is in the exhaust pipe. One additional tech tip is, if you've got a fuel misfire, intermittent misfire, and trying to figure that out, it's fuel related, fuel trims will go positive by 20% or more. They may go 30, 40%, depends where the O2 sensor is in the, in the exhaust stream and some of the other conditions. And the, and the key factor here is the downstream O2 sensors will go low voltage. They'll go under 100 millivolts, maybe down as low as one or two millivolts. An ignition misfire, on the other hand, fuel trims will typically change by 15% or less. I've seen them change as little as five or 6% uh, with an ignition misfire. But the downstream O2s will go high voltage, eight, 900. I've actually seen a full volt on downstream O2s uh, for ignition misfire.